26th of April 1986, 1.23 in the morning, Moscow time, one of the nuclear reactors at Chernobyl nuclear power plant began to melt down. I believe they were carrying out some maintenance at the time. I don't know a huge amount about it apart from that, so that's why I'm now at the Chernobyl Disaster Museum. And these are some vehicles I believe that were used in the cleanup operation. Anybody involved in the cleanup operation was was known as liquidators. That's not. But uh, the tank, I think that was used. So all of these signs as I'm heading up the first set of steps towards the museum entrance are all the towns and villages and cities that were affected by the disaster and as you can see there's many of them. The location of the museum which is where I am now is an old 1912 fire station and this is the fire station that a lot of engines were sent from when the explosion happened in 1986. It is about 60 miles from the epicentre of the blast. This is photos of the people either involved with the cleanup or who worked at the plant. The uh, radiation symbols by their picture means that they died of radiation poisoning at some point after the explosion. The Soviets attempted to keep the disaster a secret. They only reported on it three days later in a Soviet newspaper, highlighted in red here, a small passage of text that just said there'd been a disaster and that the victims were receiving support. This was three days later when they started to realize just how huge this was. This is the New York Times showing a picture of the affected areas. The Ukraine, Belarus, parts of Russia, only became apparent that the radiation levels were much higher than they should be when a, a nuclear plant in Sweden began to record high levels of radiation. And it was figured that it was actually coming from Soviet Ukraine. Here we have an exhibit on the cleanup operation in the weeks after. They uh, initially started to drop sand on the reactor using helicopters. These pilots were exposed to very high levels of radiation. This is a really good three-dimensional map of the exclusion zone. You can see the Chernobyl nuclear plant right there in the center of the shop. Shots as I zoom in. There we go. And this is the cooling pond that was used to cool the reactors as a consequence. Those two areas, the plant and the cooling pond, are extremely dangerous these days and are still completely abandoned. The exclusion zone meant that over a hundred thousand people from over a hundred towns and villages in both the Ukraine and Belarus had to abandon their homes and find other places to live just because of the extremely high levels of radiation in the soil, in the water, and in the air at the time. Bit of an old-fashioned screen, but this is showing you the nuclear cloud and contamination caused by Chernobyl. You can see it there in Ukraine. That cloud is two days after the incident. Now the 29th. Look at that cloud over Poland, the Baltics, Finland, Sweden. Now Norway on the 30th of April and just covering a large portion of the continent. This is a fascinating computer terminal that uh, tells you the land devastated by radiation and uh, the towns and villages in the exclusion zone. So if you, for example, find Chernobyl, it will give you a, a load of information on the town of Chernobyl, it will tell you the population is 13,000 before the disaster, it's 16 kilometers away from the actual nuclear power plant and that it was evacuated on the 5th of May, some I don't know, 10 days, 2 weeks after 
the disaster. It also tells you the radiation background on the day of evacuation was 43 to 20 MR stroke H. That's the measurement of radiation, I believe, and that is meaning that it exceeds the acceptable norm by 2,000 times. Gives you a reading for May 1986 and also May 2006. And it gives you some pictures of the abandoned town. Incredible. <laughs>